Hello viewers, Super GT here once again. Okay, so the finals of the Club 100 sprint races for you. Nice and dirty this car. Right, now, we're up against some big boys here. Some big, famous or infamous enemies, according to you guys. Because in the chat last time, the guy right in front of me, Mr. Barul Smith, my god, you were really crucifying him in the comments. But I must be honest, we've had some really good races for five years. We've raced each other, we know each other very well. We get on very well. So I found it a little bit unfair, to be honest. And the other guy on pole position here, Connor Jupp, once tipped as the next Lewis Hamilton, an ex-British national champion in Super 1, come down to Club 100 to have a play for the day. Uh, we've got some big opponents right ahead of us. So third on the grid, you may have seen the heats videos um, in the heats we had some decent results um, obviously the two guys ahead of me had slightly better results and that's put them ahead of me you see them both there Anwar and Connor so 14 laps here for the heavyweight a final up against the big boys let's see how it goes let's see what we can do around Wilton Mill my favorite track on the UK calendar Okay, here we go then, starting third. Now this is a slight advantage by starting on the inside. It's that the pole man controls the pace and therefore he can just gun it instantly and then I kind of follow him through instantly into second. You can see there Connor already getting a really nice gap. So he got a really good launch off the line and uh, kind of sprung a surprise on everyone, as he can do as the pole man. Um, but it's my job now in second place to try to make sure he doesn't get away just try to keep within that slipstream and it might seem a little weird that slipstream exists but it really does exist you really do notice it. it's not like you just gain 100 miles an hour straight but you can certainly keep with someone who might otherwise be quicker or even if you're evenly speed uh, evenly matched if you have even speed then you might just gain a little bit because of the slipstream so lap one, he's actually got a really good launch, but I think I've actually caught up slightly um, uh, after that. So once again, we're gonna cut to the amazing Alpha Live uh, footage. So they're at the event recording the whole thing uh, on the live stream, and you can watch that all on YouTube. Uh, the next event will be at Clay Pigeon at the end of September. And uh, then you see now, <laughs> actually there's lots of grass on the track, and someone actually went off for a bit of off-roading on lap one, not sure who. But uh, bringing some grass back onto the track, not that it made much difference for us there as we came through. So by this point here, at the end of lap two, or sorry, halfway through lap two, right on the back of Connor. So we're most certainly in this race. 14 laps though, it's not, um, it's not exactly an endurance race, but it's not, um, it's not as short as the sprints obviously, as the heats, sorry. The heats were only eight laps each. So you have um, a little bit more time here, nearly double the length of the rate of the heats. Um, you have a bit more time to uh, measure the race and get comfortable. It's not always best just to go for the overtake straight away, even if you can. And the thing I'm trying to analyse here is where he's strong, where I'm strong. And I think my car is very strong in a straight line. And I think his one is actually strong coming out of all the medium speed corner. You see here, he might just gap me a slight amount. No, he doesn't actually. So let's see if that actually transpires in a couple of different places. I think the main place you're going to notice it is here on the middle straight. So he's kind of does pull away slightly, I would say, there. And then uh, through the boot, he's actually really strong. So the left into the right. I go right up to the back of him. And then he gaps me slightly as we come through the final corner. And let's see if that um, top speed of this car helps me down the back straight through turn one through turn two very fast corners he's taken them very well and we still have Anwar right on our tail we both take a look behind simultaneously as we come up to the Christmas corner so we've pulled away as a little group here of three and then about a second back to Jack Bolton in fourth place at this point of the race and often it's a good idea in um, in these races just to try to pull away just work as a unit together and uh, pull away from the rest of the pack so we've got a nice little thing going here just three of us here 
And if we stay like this, then it's probably going to be one of us three winning the race, as long as we work together and stay together. A lot of you who, um, who are into cycling will probably understand the same kind of tactics. Similar, similar things when you get a breakaway group and you have to work together, you can't start fighting each other. But um, I say that, but right here I've had enough. I'm just going to go full send out the inside. So screw working together. I'm going to go for the lead and try to win this race early on. So only lap 5 of 14. So still quite a long way to go. Only about, well, about a third of the way into the race. Plenty of time left for this to go horribly wrong. Bit of a bump from Connor through that turn. And then into the next one. He's not going to hang about. He's going to go straight back into the lead. I tried to go for the cut back on the way out. It's not quite going to happen. And unfortunately, with a bit of a speed loss, Anwar managed to get the jump on me and go up into second. So, started the lap in second, went up to first, and now ended in third. So, quite a dramatic lap that will change. And you see that now player four and player five kind of want to enter the game. As now Jack Bolton just half a second off now and not too far away and he's going to start featuring in the race so maybe it wasn't a good idea to start doing that but I do like to try to sometimes just ruffle the feathers of the other drivers just try to show that I'm there show my presence in the race rather than just hang about in a second for too long the problem is in second of course uh, by hanging around in second for too long is that you might just get overtaken and go down to third um, which is not ideal. So sometimes it is best just to go into the lead and try to stay there. Of course, on this occasion, Connor just went for the instant reply, which I wasn't really expecting. You don't normally see people doing that, but uh, it worked, and he's now back in the lead. So across the line, that's in the lap five, onto lap six, coming through turn one and two. Look how close we are, nose to tail, as we come up the back straight. Connor looking over his shoulder, going defensive, and we're all weaving all over the place just to make sure the guy behind stays behind. But this is uh, this is good news for Jack Bolton in fourth. So all this defensive driving is just going to help the people behind as we slow each other down. So the first four laps were rather calm and serene. It was a picture of tranquility here at Wilton Mill. But that all changed as soon as I went for that move and now it's all uh, very, very different. The dynamic of the race has very, very much changed as we now try to defend each other, to defend from each other, slow each other down, make sure we keep our position. So, things getting interesting as we come through the final turn on lap number seven. That's half of the race done as we begin lap number eight of 14. And I'm not quite on the tail of Anwar this time as um, I didn't get a good run out of the boot on uh, lap number seven. But you see, by the end of the Christmas corner, I'm right back on the tail of these guys, so it seems that my my top speed is really good. Um, as he goes for a uh, goes for a move there, and he's not quite come off, so I've gone up into the lead. So a tiny bit of contact. Connor goes for another return move straight away, and it doesn't quite come off. So I'm going to go into the lead of the race, and actually looking behind, Connor's got his hands up, and I think he, he might even think that I pushed him out of the way there, but it was a slight tap from Anwar. And I think Anwar looked behind just before he braked and he might have braked a bit too late as a mistake or just to try to uh, defend from me. I wasn't quite sure exactly how that came about but he just went into the back of Connor and it pushed them both wide and I just uh, made the most of that and went up the inside on the way out and went from third to first. So a topsy-turvy race so far. Um, spent sort of even amount of time in first, second and third at this point. Now Anwar's in second, so he's made the move on Connor, and then you see they're both pointing forward, meaning that they want to work together to make sure that I don't get away. So I do have a bit of a gap, so he's not they're not right on my tail. I have maybe two or three car lengths at this point, so I do have a bit of a margin. That gives me a bit of breathing space, so I can just get my head down and try to put in some good laps, and just try to build that gap even more, just hope that they start fighting a little bit more because that can happen. If you start bridging that gap, they're going to get a little bit aggressive with each other and they can't quite work out who it is that should be the one to try to catch me up. Down the back straight, again, human DRS has been deployed as we come up into Christmas corner, meeting the apex nicely. 
but the pressure's on now as we enter the final third of the race. So can I keep my cool? It is very tough in this position. It seems easy, but when you've got some good drivers right on your tail or very close to you, you know, the pressure's on. You can't make one mistake, otherwise they're instantly on you or they're right past you. And in fact, there's four players. I say players, not a game. I say there's four people. As Connor goes for the move, it doesn't quite come off for him. Anwar's wide. Jack Bolton's going to come through from fourth to second. So Jack Bolton, the net gainer there. Anwar, the, the net loser, going from second to fifth out of that altercation. And I suppose I could say I'm a gainer out of that as well, as now the gap has actually increased from myself to second place, who is now Jack Bolton. So he's going to be the one to try to hunt me down on now lap 11. So three to go after this. Again, just try to keep my cool. This is actually getting very tense. When you've got these um, these fast drivers right on your tail, it's not easy to keep your focus on exactly what you're going to be doing. So the main thing really, just look behind, make sure I've got a gap and then just get your head down. Just make sure I, I know that I'm not going to get overtaken by taking that quick look behind. And then now just try to really focus on taking that racing line. So Connor back into second place. And you see the group of four there. Uh, second, third, fourth and fifth. And they're going to have to try to hunt me down. So Connor's got his head down. He knows what he wants to do. He's going to try to hunt me down and gain. He's actually set a 53.3. I only set a 53.7, he's gained 4 tenths on lap 11, 4 tenths, that is a very big gain and with less than 3 laps to go, if he keeps gaining 4 tenths a lap, this is not over, even though I did have a very nice margin about 2 laps ago. So this is actually going to get increasingly tense as we build up to the final couple of laps of the race, down the hill through Parker's onto the back straight. Crucial corner of that one as it leads onto this uh, mini straight here into the boot section on the brakes nice and late. Clip the curb, keep to the left. Connor there gaining even more with Jack Bolton in tow. Um, Stuart Jones has been overtaken there by Anwar. Anwar's back into fourth. Stuart Jones back down to fifth. And again, the gap comes down by three temps this time. 0.6 the gap. So that gap is coming down quite worryingly. I thought I was safe. Honestly, two laps ago, I thought. This is over, I should be able to bring this home. But Connor has other ideas. He wants to make sure he wins this race on the road, get back past me and show everyone who's boss. But I'm gonna to try to show him who's boss by staying in the lead from here to the end. One and a half laps left to go. Can I do it? Can I hold him off with about a minute of racing to go or a bit more than a minute? I'm gonna take a look over my shoulder there and actually, you, I must be honest, he caught me by surprise because he's gained so quickly. You can tell when you look behind how big a gap is, roughly. Yellow flag there, so he can't overtake me through this corner at least. But right, uh, by the final lap now, he is right on my tail, as you can see again with the external shot. So this is going to go down to the wire. I'm going to look behind, look over my shoulder, move over to the right-hand side. You can see him on the left. So I'm take the racing line once again. Move back over to... to take a better life in the corner as long as I keep a, width, a, a car width or a cart width and again go defensive down the hill into the Ashby Heb and Jack Bolton going defensive in third place up against Anwar as we then exit the Ashby Heb in half a lap left to go again defensive so taking another look taking a look on every corner just to make sure he isn't quite close enough to go for the move on the exit onto the back straight he is still right there looking over my shoulder once again I'm fully over to the left hand side Moving over to take the racing line again through the boot. I'm going to take a narrow line on the exit. Yellow flag kind of saves me there as he can't overtake me through the final corner. We come across the line and we're going to win the race. And I must say, even though Joe Holmes wasn't here today, that I think that was actually my hardest race of the year. Normally Joe Holmes gives me the hardest races ever. But I think that was actually one of the toughest ones I've been part of. Uh, the pressure was pretty unrelenting from the start to the finish. But well, we just managed to keep it together and pull a victory out of the bag. Very, very happy with that one.
Okay then, so once the heavyweight final is done, we move on to the super final, which is a combination of all the heavyweights and all of the lightweights. So by courtesy of winning the heavyweight final, I'm at the front of the heavyweight queue. Ed Bar's in front of me there, he is the winner of the lightweight, so he is at the front of the lightweight queue. And early on here, so we have five minutes to test our car and just to make sure that it's decent. And it's really a game of thrones almost, like you just don't want to be at the front. You kind of want to settle in behind it to see if your car is better or worse than the people around you. But eventually, the race is going to start. I didn't change my car, I was kind of happy with it, I'm not too happy with it, but it's going to be good enough, hopefully. Coming across the line, here we go then to begin um, 12 laps of racing here in the Super Final. So through turn one, up against Steve Hicks in the orange suit. He's someone to watch out for. It's mainly between me and him for the Super Final crown. The winner of the Super Final crown, or the championship, gets a test day in a Janetta race car courtesy of Altima Academy. So that's a very good prize. And uh, between me and Steve Hicks at the moment, we are the real two protagonists of the championship. So Joe Holmes, Robert Newman, they've won many races they've done very well but crucially they've missed rounds and you can't afford to miss a round because that will put you right out of the championship so I do need to do as well as I can in this race ideally beating Steve Hicks that's the main target so Ed Barr's putting out a nice margin on this first lap um, it's fairly similar to the, the heavyweight final that we just watched but on this occasion I'm not quite as quick I'm not quite as quick to, uh, to hunt him down and reel him in I think a similar scenario um, as the previous race. I think my car is very good in a straight line, but just not so good out of the slower speed acceleration point. So you can see I've definitely gained um, on this first sector, or first half of the second lap. So uh, this race most certainly isn't over. I'll definitely still win this one. Sometimes you can tell quite quickly if your car isn't quite good enough if the car in front just starts driving off into the distance, uh, which is obviously a worrying sign. On this occasion, that isn't happening. I might be able to just reel this guy in and maybe go for that victory, which will be an amazing day, winning the heavyweight final and then maybe winning the super final. Let's see how it goes. Through turn one, through turn two. And again, a good exit here. This is where my car is, seems really strong. Coming up the back straight, Going defensive, Steve Hicks right on my tail, so I know he's right there as we looked over my shoulder. So covering him off. But as we come down the hill into the Ashby hairpin, I don't cover him off here, and there he is up the inside. Steve Hicks into second. My main rival has got ahead. And you see instantly just pulls out a bit of, well, half a car length, as I can't quite keep on his tail through here. And he's going to look to go into the lead as quickly as possible and put a cart between myself and him. Yellow flag through the final section here. So what is going on, I'm not quite sure. But uh, no overtaking for that section, but we can overtake now through the final corner. At the end of lap number three, across the line we go. So, through turn one, through turn two. Is Steve Hicks going to go for the move here? Up against Ed Bars. Ed Bars goes defensive, looks over his shoulder, doesn't defend it. And Steve Hicks takes that invitation, goes up into the lead of the race. So I'm in third, he's in first, Ed Bar's now in second. And then Steve Hicks goes very defensive down the hill, which is perhaps what I should have done against him. But there's that question mark, you know, you don't want to start going defensive too early in the race. Because as we saw in the previous race, you start bringing other people into the race. So often early on, it's best just to churn out laps and build gaps to the people behind just make it an exclusive battle at the front in as many ways as possible so through the final corner we see Steve Hicks there worryingly has already built a nice little gap there over Ed Bars in second and through the first couple of corners Ed Bars I think conscious of the title fight here he points me through put uh, you know points to the side lets me through so I think he knew there that um, it's between myself and Steve Hicks there for the, for the title. He didn't really want to interrupt the fight. He didn't have to do that. I mean, um, it's anyone's game, it's anyone's race. Um, you don't have to let the title people through. You can just race your own race. 
but um, Ed Barr's um, doing what's good for me, I suppose. By lap number 12, by the final lap, I can cut this long story short because I was in second for most of it. You see the gap that Steve Hicks managed to build. Um, he was just like a couple of temps or a tenth quicker every lap and I just couldn't quite you know, keep up. I, I was doing my best but I just couldn't quite do anything about it. I think the only real thing I could have done is just defended like hell for the whole race. But I don't often like doing that. Um, across the line we go. We finish in second, uh, quite annoyingly behind our main rival, um, but still he drove really well and fair play to him. He's going to go down to the wire at Clay Pigeon at the final round and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how that one pans out. But there we go guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video as always, let me know your thoughts and I shall see you next time. Um, so do tune in of course to the Alpha Life footage at Clay Pigeon, I'll make a community post about that and then maybe you can tune in. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support on the channel. Almost run that guy over, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Good race, man. Well man. Couldn't keep up with you. Rocket. Yeah, it was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get up to? Um, well done, man. I was in fourth, but then me and Ed were side by side, and I had to take to the grass. So Did you keep third? No. No, I, I, I mean, I pointed you through because you and Steve were fighting for the championship, so I thought I'd just yeah. stay behind for a bit. I, I, I mean, almost kept up with him. off a bit on the last couple of laps. Yeah, uh, there was a big gap all of a sudden. Yeah. To you, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, his car was just the. But like, going through the downhill hairpin, my car was just really bad. Yeah. They wouldn't turn. Yeah. I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. I mean, like, at first, I thought you were quicker than me. You pulled a little gap. I started like it was mainly up the top end. On the straight, yeah. Yeah, good race. Cheers.